I'm an age coach, Martin Gooden. I've got Tony Lang here. Tony is the former. Tell him what you did in boxing, Tony. Yeah. As regards the Commonwealth title, which title did you actually hold? Well, that took place actually in 1987, the Commonwealth title fight. This was at the um, Tottenham Oxford football ground. Why Tart Lane, yeah? It was quite a night, really, because... Um, Hold on, before you, before you tell me about the night, who did you actually fight? I fought a fellow from Zambia named David Shoeboy. David Shoeboy. And, um, yes, interesting fellow, quite a lot of a fellow towards the end of the fight. Yeah. yeah. Tried to make friends in the middle of the battle, but I haven't had it. Because I haven't, okay, okay. What, 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 what was your experience in leading up to that fight? You know, you knew you was in a position where, you know, Things, well, things were going to happen for you. This fella you came win. from Zambia. I couldn't, I couldn't expect and that. He, he wasn't going to come from Zambia to just sit down. And um, my coach says to me, if he wins this fight, he's a big hero in his village. Yeah. And I thought, well, I want to win the fight. I'd be a hero with him myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, other than that, I took it like any ordinary fight. I will admit it was a... Uh, strain on the mental mentality because the weather conditions leading up to that fight it wasn't extremely good if people can go back as far as 1987 mm. it was very windy it was picking up trees out the ground was it an out outdoor fight then? no it was an indoor was fight an indoor but the fight. preparation was ample oh, okay okay so this occasion but i got through the fight uh the fight got stopped in my favor in the 11th round yeah and um we had a party afterwards which you know it's quite well for me. Okay. Can I ask you another question? Okay. Um, everybody, everybody has a, you know, a nemesis of a person, whether that be in the gym, whether that be in a fight, who, no matter how many times you spar with them, how many times you fight them, they always give you kind of a problem, a tough time. Not that they're better than you, that the, their style might That's be. That's a very easy question to yeah. answer. I think I know who that is, but I want you to say who that was, yeah? The gifted one. Curtin and Lang. Curtin and Lang, your brother. Terrorised me. But then again, he had me down as his apprentice. Right. The only one. Right. And I'm sure, you, obviously, you would have learned a hell of a lot. Well, he's never hit me clean. Caught me clean, as he yeah. says. Yeah. Meaning flush on the chin. <laughs> <laughs> so, qu another question regarding, um, obviously, Curtin. You know, we, we know who we beat in a non-title yeah, about, um, but as regards your, yours and his relationship to do with boxing, was was you always aspiring to be better than him? Uh, was, he well, the one, you know, was, you the one, was you the one motivated him, or was it both of you were working together in synergy to better each other to get the best well, careers out of yourself? In the case of um, in the amateur days, people would say I stood out more than fact. Yeah. Uh, the old amateur trainers, you know, God bless them, now they've passed. Is that the Man Brothers? Uh, yeah, the Man Brothers, yeah. Billy West, Matt Staples, Derek Lee, they've all passed now. Yeah. And their power team shot would be says, I was a better boxer than my brother Kirk. I was a better fighter. Right. And, uh, yeah. I would, but, say, yeah, I would say that as well. He was uh, really a front foot fighter. Aggressive. Yeah. Well, my style of fighting was totally different from Kirk's. Kirk's aggression was more controlled than mine. And uh, a good punch could get me into the mood of aggression, where Kirk could bide his time and then bring his aggression on. Yeah, where he was from round one. Yeah, yeah. I've got a question for you, final question. Um, what advice would you give to, because there's a lot of up and coming fighters nowadays, and. What I see with a lot of the young fighters, this seems to be a conveyor belt of the same thing. You know, everybody wants to be the Mayweather, Logard, everybody wants to be Prince Nazim. Well, nothing's changed in that like aspect, that. aspect because yeah. my fighter back in the day was Muhammad Ali. Right. I wouldn't say I wanted to exactly Yeah, but your style like was not like Muhammad Ali. Exactly. Right. But he was my hero. Right, right. Curtin and Lang was my hero. Yeah. Rabito Duran. Yeah. Um, but nowadays, everybody wants to copy a certain fighter's style of boxing. When I think every fighter should have his own identity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
and that could be related to their temperament and mm. their, 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 their frame, their body frame, etc. You, you know, you, Once you've uh, discovered your own identity in the boxing ring, then that's your trademark. And mine was to um, slip, slide, but what we have trying to take as less punishment as possible. Mm -hmm. Try and be evasive as possible. Yeah. But each fight is a different fight from the last fight. Yeah. So um, you just have to go with the flow and stick within your own ability, I think. What advice would you give to young fighters, up and coming um, young fighters? Up and coming young fighters, I would say stay with it. Don't ever get despondent when things aren't going your way. Um, also, know exactly where you want to be in the game. There's no kidding yourself. Yeah. Because boxing is a thing you can't tell a lie about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, uh, no, there's no lying, it's the honest truth. You, you can't, you're not sure measures to success in boxing. So, you know, like you just said, like, um, you know, know what you want, etc., etc., etc. I understand that, but how much of that? is also down to the trust of a coach. Um, some of that is down to the trust of a coach. You get what well, I mean? the coach's interest... Because sometimes coaches are the ones what are the ones are the problem. Well, this is exactly... Yeah. The coach's interest will develop more when he sees how much application the fighter is putting into his, into his workload. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, some fighters are very temperamental, moody, then that's part of the trainer's part to get them moody, to get them fixed up for a fight. But a lot of the encouragement will come within himself. Family members, close friends. But ultimately it's got to come from him though, surely that's part. Yes, he's got to want to yeah. do it. There's no forcing any fighter, anybody into something they don't want to do. It's got to come from within the heart. And I think there's a lot of fighters nowadays, um, like it says, manufactured in a sense. Yeah, yeah. But natural talent, I've been at the boxing scene for a little while myself, so it's not for me to say. To be honest, who is the world heavyweight champion right now? Uh, from Nottingham, I'll say from Nottingham Lee Wood. Obviously, it's great that we've got, you know, a fighter in Lee Wood who not only is good at boxing and, and has done his trade the hard way, okay? He respects the history of boxing, which is very important. I Massively important. Yeah, very important. He respects the history. Uh, you, know, res you know, he'll tell you, he'll tell you about the group of us, um, he'll tell you about, you know, yourself, he'll tell you about fighters of the, of the past. You know, there was people before yourself, there was people before, you know, when I got into boxing and, and you have to respect that and you have to know that, I believe you have to know that history to appreciate the sport of boxing. Um, it is the most unforgiving sport, let me add. Yeah. Well, it doesn't take prisoners, does it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sweat, blood and tears. A lot of that is in boxing. It is a very highly emotional sport. I think it's the most emotional sport you can get because it's a one on one. Yeah. It's a time of being away from your family, two, three months at a time. Fight night, out the way, get back to your family. But um, for up and coming boxers, they've got to want it badly. No one's going to give it to them. They have to want it badly to appreciate it. You have to want to move in life itself. These are the words my coach used to say to me. <laughs> and they told me, listen, thanks. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have a good day, mate. Have a good day, too. <laughs>